Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bed Surgery and Age. So today I welcome to another lecture in the radiography pathology of abdomen. So today we will be dealing with the small intestines. Okay, before this class I had talked about the stomach. We started the GIT. After stomach, today we will be discussing the small intestine. In the next class, we will be doing the large intestine. Then we will wrap up the abdomen x-ray, radiography pathology of abdomen. Then we we'll go for the thorax. So today we will be dealing the radiography pathology of small intestine. Before going to the video, there are some formalities. Okay, if you are liking my content, do subscribe to this channel. It helps me to grow also. And if you want to follow some cases which I am doing the surgeries in the Facebook, I post all those cases in pictorial presentation now i am also planning to give the detailed surgical procedure also you can follow me in the facebook facebook and in instagram i usually post all these notes of these lectures as well as the pptts and uh, also there is a telegram here not mentioned in the same name bed surgery at each you can join where i will i usually post the notes in pdf format related articles and also the pptts which i am doing all those in pdf form, format is shared in the telegram channel this is my twitter handle okay so this is the book which i referring you know this for those who are new okay this is a very good book veterinary diagnostic radiology by thrall uh, seventh edition is the latest one you can go through this book so coming to the our class first some normal radiographing findings you know small intestine have three part duodenum jejunum and uh, ileum so, uh, so if you will take some survey radiographs then what is the normal finding or what is the normal parameter those we will discuss so first one is the bowel diameter okay so this is a x-ray an x-ray of cat this is an x-ray of dog okay so the normal bile diameter there is some reference so the diameter the ratio of diameter of small intestine to for cats i am telling diameter of small intestine to width of end plate height or you can say end plate height or width whatever end plate height of l2 this is l7 l7 l6 l5 l4 l3 l2 so this ratio should be less than 2 okay in some articles you will find that the diameter of small intestine is less should be less than equal to 12 millimeter but many of the articles or books you will find this reference the diameter of small intestine to the width of uh, uh, the height of the end plate l2 what is the end plate l2 so this is the l2 this is the end plate okay so this height or width whatever you can tell so this should you should know the concept okay technical terms may vary but you should know the concept so this end plate height or width this okay should be measured and also you have to measure usually in case of cat the width is measured from mucosa to mucosa mucosa to mucosa okay so in case of dog it is serosa to serosa we will discuss this uh, dog also in case of dog it is serosa to serosa okay so you have to find a gas filled intestine which gives a better contrast like here this is a gas filled intestine here okay so you have to measure mucosa to mucosa this length and we have to measure this length so you have to take ratio this length to this length it should be less than 2 diameter of small intestine to width of end plate height of l2 it should be less than 2 okay this is normal finding similarly in case of dog here is l2 here the reference is l5 this is l7 l6 l5 here you see the end plate of l2 but here is the body of l5 body of l5 so the ratio of diameter of small intestine to the width of body of l5 or height of body of l5 this is the body this is the midpoint actually this is the body and this height too you have to find a gas filled intestine like here here is a gas filled intestine you have to take serosa to serosa 
ओके सो दिस रेशियो ऑफ दिस हाइट टू दिस हाइट इट शुड बी लेस देन 1.6 1.6 आल्सो देयर इज अनदर रेफरेंस यू विल फाइंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द नॉर्मल अबडोमिनल रेडिगम सो दिस हाइट दिस लेंथ इट शुड बी लेस देन 2 टाइम्स द विड्थ ऑफ रिब 2 टाइम्स द विड्थ ऑफ रिब ओके देयर इज अनदर रेफरेंस बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम यू विल फाइंड दिस रेफरेंस और इट्स इट इज मोर एक्यूरेट देन दिस विड्थ ऑफ रिब रेफरेंस okay so what is this the length of the diameter of the intestine to the body of l5 body or mid height whatever you can say just remember where the height is taken concept is important okay so the ratio should be less than 1.6 so this is the reference of bavel diameter what you will find in normal cases also you should know that that the bowel diameter usually they are uniform all across the length duodenum can be slightly have larger diameter but most of the time the jejunum ileum or the distal part of duodenum they have equal diameters okay so this is the reference regarding the diameter next we will go for the number of views you should acquire while evaluating the small intestine so uh, many articles and also books suggest that you should take at least three view okay the left lateral the right lateral and the ventral dorsal these three views you should always take while evaluating the intestine why because you see in uh, uh, the intestines mostly the gi it will find two things that is you will find fluid portion which will have a soft tissue opacity and you will have a gas which actually provides the concept so when you will take multiple views these fluid and gas will distribute among themselves providing the inherent contrast you may not need a positive contrast like barium or organic iodine like that so these gases will discuss the contrast also how this inherent gas helps in contrast stereography okay for that purpose you have to take multiple views okay here see one thing can you see the duodenum in the ventral dorsal this is the duodenum here is the pylorus here du duodenum is coming can you see in the anti mesenteric border sorry so in the anti this is mesenteric border this is anti mesenteric border can you see some concave depressions let me erase this one for you so that you can appreciate can you see the concave depressions these are known as pseudo ulcers i will discuss what is pseudo ulcers these are known as pseudo ulcers so these pseudo ulcers which is normal finding in case of dog is evident when there is gas present okay so these pseudo ulcers basically is due to the lymphoid accumulation lymphoid ac accumulation lymphoid tissue accumulation okay these are normal findings these normal findings can be seen when there is gas present or some contrast is there okay so that is why you have to take multiple views so that the gas and fluid will be distributed among themselves providing the inherent contrast let us take some another example how inherent air helps in contrast so these are two radiographs of same animal this is right lateral and this is left lateral okay so in the right lateral view i told you the gas present in the stomach usually resides in the pondus here you can see this gas is present in fundus and you may not appreciate any pathology in the intestines or even the pylorus now when you will simply turn the animal to the left lateral gas will come to the pylorus this is the pylorus pylorus and from pylorus the gas will enter into the intestines providing good contrast to evaluate these structures these intestines okay so that that is how you can provide natural contrast or inherent contrast rather than going for the contrast radiography like barium or organic iodine so this is pseudo ulcers which i was talking about pseudo ulcers this is a magnified view you can see this pseudo ulcers okay these are basically due to the accumulation of the lymphoid tissue this is normal finding it usually found uh, it is found in dog and is very normal there is no pathology so now bowel wall thickness but for bowel wall thickness 
it is better to go for ultrasonography to uh, know the what is the thickness of the bowel it is very important particular in a disease known as ibd inflammatory bowel disease for this this is very important it is better uh, pronounced or better measured in ultrasonography but sometimes in some x-ray you may appreciate that the wall is thickened you can see here the wall is actually thickened this is the lumen okay the wall is thickened here you can see clearly the wall is thickened but this is not the proper uh, radiography is not a proper thing to have uh, proper technique to evaluate the bowel thickness it is better you should go for the ultrasonography but sometimes they are visible in radiograph also next the bowel diameter i told you the bowel diameter should be uniform all across the intestines duodenum can have slightly bigger diameter or larger diameter but all other things jejunum distal duodenum and the ileum all of them will have similar diameter there might be slight variation like 1 to 2 mm variation like that but throughout they will have some uniform diameter this is the important in, and uh, this is normal survey radiograph finding now we will go for the contrast radiography i told you first is the inherent air that is present inside the abdomen that in the git itself stomach contains gas the intestines also contain some gas so these inherent air will see some radiograph also through which we will know that how this inherent air can diagnose diseases okay apart from that you can go for barium sulfate sulfate uh, suspension dose rate is dog in 62 ml mm per kg cat is 12 to 16 ml mm per kg you can also go for organic iodine solution this is particularly important if you are suspecting perforation okay in case of perforation intestinal perforation barium is contraindicated you should not give barium suspension and regarding organic iodine solution the commercial organic iodine solutions are hyperosmolar okay it means it is has some high osmolarity hyperosmolar it means actually it will draw water from the intestinal or the interstitial cells into the intestinal lumen causing fluid opacity or it may hinder some pathology so you have to go for some dilution of this organic solution then you can give 2 to 3 ml per kg in case of dog in case of cat 2 ml per kg apart from this you can also give radio opaque markers like bips barium impregnate polyethylene spheres okay Now it varies from company to company which makes things it has comes in two shapes that is 5 mm or large spheres 1.5 mm that is small spheres so the dose rate is you have to give 10 5 mm or the large sphere and 30 number of 1.5 mm spheres we will see radiographically how the spheres looks and then you have to take the uh, radiographs at some intervals okay note down these intervals this is basically contrast radiography let us see some x rays theory is theory let us see some practicals also so the how inherent air can diagnose it is see this is right lateral view this is left lateral view. see in this right lateral view the fundus contains the gas apart from this there is no other pathology you, you can actually appreciate though there are some mottled appearance here okay in this particular region but it is not that clear but when you will turn the patient to left lateral see here this is the pylorus from which the duodenum is arising the entire thing is actually pylorus and the duodenum are arising here see this duodenum see the structure of duodenum okay like this it goes here 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 okay this is actually plication this is known as plication of intestine okay can you see a foreign body here this foreign body is anchored to the pylorus and due to this is linear foreign body this is a case of linear foreign body very very difficult to diagnose because they usually don't come in regular x rays they are not radio opaque so you have to take multiple views to give a contrast linear foreign body linear foreign body we will discuss also linear foreign body separately when we will go to the intestinal diseases so you see this is plication this is known as plication sorry this is known as plication of the intestine okay see this plication okay 
pleating and plication they are very much characteristic to linear parenchyma it is only diagnosed when you will change the position or change the view from right lateral to left lateral when you did that then only you can diagnose that this is a case of linear foreign body okay so the views when you will change the position the fluid and the gas will redistribute among themselves causing the or uh, making the disease diagnosed in a better way okay so this is the inherent gas which is present inside the git which can help this is another example where inherent air or inherent gas that is present in the intestines can help you diagnose a disease here this is right lateral view in right lateral view you can find some dilated intestines which is basically normal or you may find some pathology let us assume some pathology is there okay but when you will turn the left lateral can you see some airs inside the abdomen air pockets like small small air pockets outside the intestine this is known as free air or free gas inside the abdomen i told you in the when i was discussing the peritoneum okay so this indicates that there might be perforation of intestine okay through which the gas is coming into the abdomen or outside the intestine so this is basically a case of intestinal perforation when you will change the views suppose you take only right lateral there isn't any pathology or you may not diagnose intestinal perforation okay so we may give barium suppose you want to do further studies you may give barium which might have complicated if you are not taken the left lateral view that is the importance of taking different views and the inherent air can help you diagnose and this is barium in barium you can give uh, i told you the method to through which you can give i was just wanted to highlight the pseudo ulcers see the pseudo ulcers okay it is now very very clear these are pseudo ulcers these are concave depressions okay this is very normal this is you found in case of dog and the uh, segment is duodenal okay due to accumulation of lymph nodes so, similarly in case of cats you will find string of pulse string of pulse in case of cat these are normal findings so what happens in case of cat the duodenum has strong segmental contractions okay here is one contraction point here is one contraction look okay these are segmental contractions leading to appearance of a string of pulse which is very very normal in case of cat and sometimes the inherent gas will distribute among the barium providing the double contrast okay so here it is single contrast but look at this portion this double contrast inside the air and the barium is lining the um, uh, is present in the lining or you can say the mucosal border so this is providing the double contrast okay this is double contrast inherent air is sufficient to provide contrast this is bips barium impregnated polyethylene spheres these are large spheres these are small spheres they are usually given it with food actually they are given each company has its own instructions usually given 12 to 13 or 12 to 24 hour prior then the x ray is taken usually they locate the site of obstruction here in the urinary bladder also there are stones okay these are not bips but these are okay they will uh, reach the obstruction point and they will stay there for longer duration when they stay you can identify that that is the point of the obstruction okay you have to take serial radiographs sorry not longer duration serial radiographs to identify the position so next one thing important regarding the contrast study if in a survey radiograph you are finding strong evidence that there is mechanical obstruction then you should immediately go for the exploratory laparotomy rather than going for a contrast study contrast study will take much longer time complicating the patient and also it can complicate your surgery okay so this is basically written here okay this is the language from that book very nice language so in easy way i told you that so next is i will go to the intestinal pathology before that some you should know that types of intestinal dilation okay it can be focal and mild where one to three loops will be dilated and it will be the dilation will be usually between 1.5 to 2 times and it may be focal and severe one to three loops 
more than two times the um, normal then generalized mild generalized severe okay usually we will find focal and severe uh, focal uh, involvement in case of uh, mechanical obstruction let me to, uh, tell you you see there is a term known as ileus ileus it means when the food inside the git is not passing from one segment of intestine to other segment or one end to other end so simply the ingesta is not moving that time the thing is known as ileus ileus can be two types one is mechanical one is mechanical another one is functional so in simple terms mechanical means when there is actually physical obstruction okay physical obstruction it can be complete it can be partial so when there will be physical obstruction then the food will not move another thing is when there is functional problem means there might be some vascular problem of intestine vascular or maybe neuromuscular neuromuscular problem so what happens in case of mechanical obstruction you will find focal involvement usually one to three loops or four loops intestine may be affected while in case of functional you will find generalized all the intestine loops will be affected functional ileus is very difficult to diagnose from the radiograph but it can be identifiable so mechan in case of mechanical obstruction you may find mild and severe forms we will see the radiographs but an another thing about functional thing when the mechanical or physical obstruction will be there for a longer period of time then it can convert into functional okay let us see some radiographs then you can identify or appreciate so first one is the mechanical obstruction i told you mechanical ileus now first we will see the non linear foreign bodies with complete obstruction i am not discussing mostly the radio opaque which you can easily identify most of the radiographs will be of some radio lucent or which is usually not uh, recognizable in radiographs so you have to look for other signs so on complete non linear foreign body obstruction so in that case first thing you will find the dilation i told you dilation here you see the dilation this is dilated there are many radiographs don't worry we will go one by one this is the suppose this is l5 it is a uh, some crop image so suppose this is l5 you can appreciate that it is nearly double okay so this is dilation of intestine so this dilation can uh, occur just orad orad means just anterior to the obstruction point so this is a sign that there might be some obstruction next you see this image okay see the dilation this dilation okay so suppose this is l5 765 suppose this is l5 this is l this is l1 l2 l3 l this yes this is l5 you see this height of the central portion or the body of l5 and look at the diameter of the intestine okay it is enlarged it means that it might be some obstruction second point that you will find two sets of intestine one is dilated one another is normal here you see the bladder is there here is bladder over the bladder some intestinal loops are also there see these are the normal intestines okay some uh, loops are here also these are normal intestines they have don't have any pathology so you will find two different sets of intestines intestinal loops one is dilated one is normal so this is also a characteristics of mechanical obstruction see here this is very nicely demarcated so here this is l5 it is 14 mm you will find dilution of 30 mm here is 29 mm this is 27 mm but you will also find normal this is 19 mm this is not crossing the limit of 1.6 ratio of 19 to 14 is not more than 1.6 this is normal two sets of intestine and here you also can also identify the foreign body here is the foreign body actually okay this is actually a corn hob okay corn hob so this is the foreign body now we understood second point you have you are very clear next third point is you will find the uh, stacking this is known as stacking when 
this obstruction is for longer time you will find stacking of the intestine here is one stack there is another stack there is another stack here is another stacking okay stacking of the intestine another thing i forgot to mention that an article suggests that in case of dog the ratio of diameter of small intestine to the body of l5 height of body of l5 or width of body of l5 so this ratio it should be i told you in normal cases it is 1.6 okay so some article suggests that when it reaches 1.95 there is chance that the obstruction chance is 77% to 80% and when it reaches 2.05 the obstruction chances are 86 to 90% okay so in case of cat also in case of cat the diameter of small intestine 2 width or height of end plate of l2 is should be less than 2 okay when it crosses 2 more than 2 then there is some gi disease when it crosses 2.5 the obstruction becomes more obvious okay this is according to articles i forgot to mention so this is stacking okay next we will go for the partial obstruction so in case of partial obstruction it might uh, some ask you it's a very common question the gravel sign gravel sign in examiners examines maybe you get a question gravel sign Okay, what is gravel sign? See, usually in the large intestine, this is here, is the large intestine. So, in case, in large intestine, you will usually find the fecal balls. Okay, some structures which looks like feces. Okay, fecal balls. So, can you tell who, this is a, which animal, dog or cat, the x-ray of? This is cat. Okay, falciform fat is here. Okay. So, you will find fecal uh, balls usually in large intestine. When you will find similar fecal like materials in the small intestine, then this is known as gravel sign. Okay, this is the indication of partial intestinal obstruction. Okay, here this is the ventrodorsal view. You can see the intestinal loop here, which is having some fecal materials. This is known as the gravel sign. This is not large an intestine. Okay, so if you are getting confused regarding the whether the foreign body or something is present in small intestine or large intestine, you can go for pneumocolonography. This is pneumocolonography or pneumocolon, you can say pneumocolonography, where you through a pipe you can push air into the large intestine. Okay, here when the pneumocolonography is done, the foreign body is actually in the small intestine. Okay, so remember the gravel sign. Here, can you tell me which organ is this? This one is which organ? It is CSF. This is cecum. Cecum. Here you see. This is cecum. Okay, C cell organ you may find in normal abdominal radiograph also. I have already told you regarding cecum in normal abdominal radiograph. This is cecum. Next, we will go for the linear foreign body. Linear foreign body. So, in case of linear foreign body, the classical signs are pleating, like in your pant, you have pleats. Okay, so this is pleating, known as pleating or you may find plication plications also you can tell them as bunching bunch or clump like that okay pleating and plication is the very much characteristic sign for the, the linear foreign body here you see this is right lateral left lateral see the how inherent gas can make you diagnose this in the right lateral the fundus contains the gas though there are some gas present here but the intestine is not so much clear when you will take left lateral see now the intestine is very clear 
this is the pylorus portion from which the duodenum is arising and it has some plication see some plication and this is pleating this is pleating okay this is pleating pleating means you will have some pleats intestine normal like this when it is pleated like this okay pleating this is pleating plication is basically when it is like that plication we will see some images of plication also you will appreciate that okay so this is pleating and also there is plication simply it is if you would in left lateral view simply change the position and you can diagnose disease okay and one one other uh, other thing regarding linear front body it has a anchoring point so the anchoring point in case of dog you will normally you will the anchoring point is pylorus most commonly you will find pylorus in case of cat it is tongue okay at the end of or base of the tongue they have spines they are get attached so this is simply changing the view you can identify the linear for anybody let us see another radiograph this is ventrodorsal view see in, this is a contrast study to show the plication here it is not much clear though you can find some dilated loops this is large intestine actually see here this is the pylorus and duodenum okay here coming duodenum then the jejunum you see the plication this is plication this is the characteristic sign of linear foreign body there is also pleating also pleating okay some pleating here okay might be some peristalty movement also but uh, it may have some pleating and plication at the both at the same time okay so this is plication so simply changing the position can give you a contrast image and you can diagnose the linear foreign body next there is something you should know i already told you many times if you are watching this series that jejunal crowding one term jejunal crowding it is a sign of obstruction in case of cat jejunal crowding i sorry <laughs> i have written here jejunal crowding it is very common sign of obstruction in a cat but jejunal crowding is normal in case of obese cats obese cats in case of obese cats what happen that due to high amount of abdominal fat usually the jejunum will be clumped together okay that is known as jejunal crowding so here this these two images one is normal one is pathological it is very difficult to diagnose among them unless and until you know which radiograph is of which so this one is of linear foreign body obstruction of a cat while this is a normal obese cat normal obese cat okay you can find the jejunal crowding they will be placed in the central abdomen jejunal crowding which is basically you see the normal like that so usually you have to correlate with the signs lab test like that then you have to diagnose especially in case of obese cats okay so this information i wanted to give you next into susception into susception is usually diagnosed in ultrasonography okay they are better diagnosed in ultrasonography they are rarely visible in radiograph but sometimes they are visible just like i told you about the pyloro gastro intussusception this is also intussusception intussusception means invasion one person of intestine into the other the most common location is cecocolic cecocolic junction or iliocolic junction or iliocecal junction okay where the small intestine meets the large intestine in that portion is very common to get into susception they might be visible in some radiographs okay here you can see this protrusion of this portion of intestine to another portion but they usually have soft tissue opacity it may not be appreciable unless and until gas is present okay so they are better evaluated in the uh, ultrasonography now i want to ask a question if you know you can comment okay i won't tell the answer what is into susceptum and into susceptium susceptiens sorry susceptiens okay which part is into susceptium and which part is into susceptium okay do comment down now the functional ileus okay so the functional ileus is very difficult to diagnose radiographically but there is a specific disease in which there is a typical appearance 
in case of mesenteric bulbous where the anterior mesenteric artery is blocked due to the blockage of that artery the usually when the artery is blocked or there is bulbous of mesentery you will find all the loops of intestine equally enlarged or dilated okay uh, accurate term is dilation all the segments here you can find a foreign body some nail is there but when there will be mesenteric bulbous or functional ileus you will mostly find the, all the all the loops will be equally dilated okay this is a typical feature of mesenteric bulbous next we will go for the last disease uh, one thing was there inflammatory bowel disease it is usually diagnosed in ultrasonography not in radiography though you may find some in some radiography the thickening of the uh, intestine walls but they are better diagnosed ultrasonography so intestinal masses they are also better diagnosed in ultrasonography usually all the intestine things they can be better diagnosed in ultrasonography but survey radiography is the first thing so from that all those things can be done, uh, diagnosed here you can see the intestinal mass okay one loop is entering to the mass and one loop is exiting so by this you can tell that this mass is in the intestine okay so this is intestine it might be intestinal polyp tumor any other thing and here there is it was a case of intestinal abscess you can see some swelling but this was diagnosed after laparotomy okay not in this because you see usually if you tell someone to see this radiograph they will tell that this abdomen has a mottled appearance in mottled appearance i told you several diseases have mottled appearance like peritonitis pancreatitis okay so all those things will have a mottled appearance so it is very difficult to diagnose special the intestinal abscesses from this radiograph it may be diagnosed ultrasonography or exploratory laparotomy so this is all about the intestines and this radiography pathology next we will go for the large intestine and we will wrap up the radiography pathology of the abdomen then we will start the thorax most people are commenting regarding the uh, radiography pathology of thorax we will start after the large intestine so till then tata bye bye take care